Let's Make a Face Part 2 with React. We'll discuss getting started with React. What is Unpackage and NPM and what is a CDN? Why use a module bundler and what is Rollup? Importing libraries using ES6 module syntax, using JSX, JavaScript XML, for SVG graphics, and deriving graphics coordinates programmatically for our face. Here's where we left off last time. Smiley face part one. We used some CSS to make those scroll bars go away and to set the margin to zero. We used SVG to make the background circle, this big yellow circle, and these two circles for the eyes. But I was feeling a little frustrated that we couldn't use math to figure out these coordinates. But I noted down these thoughts of what math we would want to use for defining these various coordinates. What I'm going to do next is use React to define this DOM structure. And we'll pretty much be able to copy paste our HTML into JSX, which sort of lets you write HTML inside JavaScript, but it also lets you sort of inject uh, math or arbitrary JavaScript expressions. The next step here is to use the React library. And the way VizHub works with libraries is that we can just include the script tag on the page and then write some JavaScript that imports from that library. The way I like to figure out the path for libraries is to use unpackage. If I just type unpackage.com slash react and hit enter, oh, it, it gives me the, um, the common JS build. But let me just poke around here and see if I can get the browser build. Yeah, the UMD build is what we need, universal module definition. And I think I'll use this one, react.production.min. That's weighs 13 kilobytes. See, if I click through there, this is what it looks like. And then if I click through to view raw, then it gives me this URL, which I can use in a script tag in uh, my program here. So in the head is where I'm going to load this in. I'm going to make a new script tag, begin script, end script, and then the source, src, attribute of this script tag will be that URL from Unpackage. So now we can access the React global by writing some JavaScript ourselves script, not script, and then here we can write some JavaScript like console.log hello JavaScript. Now if I open the developer tools with control shift J, we see the output hello JavaScript. And what I really want to do is check that React is loading in here, and it should be a global variable called React uppercase. So if I say console.log React, there it is. There's all this stuff, all the exports of React in this single global. Let me just stop and explain what is Unpackage all about. Nowadays, NPM, Node Package Manager, is the de facto place where JavaScript libraries are hosted. You can go to npmjs.com and search for all sorts of libraries like React, or D3, each package has its own page here. If you were using Node.js, you would say npm i, or npm install, D3. But if you're working in the browser, like we are, you would use a CDN, Content Distribution Network. A Content Distribution Network, also called Content Delivery Network, it's where instead of just a single server serving the files, it's a bunch of servers that are close to the people consuming them. It's pretty much an efficient way of getting the files to your browser. Unpackage is an open source project that is a global content delivery network, or CDN, for everything on NPM. It has this URL scheme where you can specify a package, a version, and a file. And they give this example of React. So that was a little detour of 
what Unpackage is and why we're using it. The next step is to get to a place where we can start to use JSX with React. And for that, we need a module bundler. And VizHub uses Rollup internally. Rollup is this open source project that understands uh, JavaScript modules, and it can combine modules together into a single output file that's typically called a bundle. And there's a plugin for this that understands JSX and transpiles the JSX into JavaScript, which needs to be done in order to really use React. To get this going in VizHub, we need to just create a file called index.js. To create a new file, I'm going to click this little plus over here, say new file, and then I'll call it index.js and hit enter. We can take our console.log react out of here and put it into index.js. Notice that bundle.js got created automatically. It gets created automatically from the content of index.js. And again, this is using rollup internally. Now that we have bundle.js, we can change our script tag such that it just loads the content of bundle.js we can say src equals bundle.js. And now that we're using this module bundler, we can actually import React from React, the package, using this syntax. So now if we take a look at the console, it's printing out just the same as it was. The next step here is to get that React boilerplate going, which I can never remember, so I'm just going to Google for it. If you just Google React and click, uh, I guess, Getting Started, Try React, let's see what it looks like on uh, Code Sandbox. All right, this is the React boilerplate. And I forgot, we need React DOM as well. So I'm going to import React DOM from React DOM. And to use that, we need to include another script tag on our page. And to figure out the URL, I'm going to go back to Unpackage and just type react-dom. And again, we're getting the wrong build. So if I just poke around here, I can find the right build for the browser, the umd react -dom -production min. This is the one that we want. And if we click View Raw, we get this URL that we can then use in our page. So we can say script, source equals, and then just paste that URL, not script. Now we should be able to say console.log react dom, and it should print out something. OK, great. That worked. So now we can start using React for DOM manipulation. Now it's all coming back to me. This is what the boilerplate looks like. We get a root element where we say document.getElementById root, and then we call react-dom.render our app component into the root element. But first, we need this to be in place. Uh, document.getElementById is going to look for an element on the page with this ID of root, which is not there yet. So let me just create that div id equals root, not div. So now we've got a div on the page that will come back for this query, document.getElementById root. But now we need an app component. So let me just create that right now. I'll say const app equals, it's just going to be a function that returns some JSX. Uh, and this is what JSX looks like. I can say, for example, h1, not h1, and then hello, JSX. All right, it worked. Hello, JSX. If you're new to JavaScript, there is a lot going on here. Um, const is a way of defining variables. So we're defining app as a variable whose value is a function. And this syntax here is the uh, arrow syntax for creating functions. And if the body of a function is in parentheses, 
it's the same thing as a traditional curly braces function body and then saying return this JSX. But I'm going to go with the more concise syntax for now. Now that we made it this far, we can take our SVG stuff from over here and start translating it into JSX. I'm going to start by expanding this comment to include all of our SVG. So we won't see it anymore. And I can take things bit by bit and convert them to JSX. I'm going to start by putting the first of our circles into JSX. If I delete this H1 and then paste that HTML, we get this useful error message, unterminated JSX contents. That means that we're missing the closing SVG tag. So we can say not SVG and that error should go away. And in JSX, uh, we need a closing. Uh, this circle needs to be a self-closing uh, thing. So I can just put a slash here and that problem should go away. And boom, we have our circle. But now it's getting created from JSX, not just HTML. Let me just fix the indentation there. So now we can start doing things programmatically. I'm going to start by extracting width and height into variables. Outside of this app, I'm going to just make some variables. Const width equals 960. Const height equals 500. But since these are quoted, they're going to be strings. And that's not what we want. So I'm just going to remove these quotes around these things. Now we can do math on these and uh, we won't get confusing results. Now that these variables exist, we can use them in our JSX in place of these strings. So I'm going to delete that 960. And then in JSX, we can use curly braces to sort of escape out into JavaScript. So whatever I put inside of these curly braces, it can be any JavaScript. So I'm going to do the same for height. We can say height equals curly braces, height. And now we can define all these numbers in terms of width and height. What did we want CX to be? Let me go back to my comments and just bring those over here into our index.js so I can see them. And in JavaScript, the comments look like this. I had this notion that there should be a variable called center x. So let's go ahead and define that. Const center x equals, well, to put it in the center, it needs to be width divided by 2. Now, instead of 480, I could say center x. cx equals center x, just like that. We can do the same for y. Let's compute center y equals height divided by 2. And then we can set cy to be center y. And what should the radius be? I think that was this comment here. r should be equal to this stuff. Stroke width we don't have to find. So let me just define that. Stroke width is going to be, uh, well, it's 10 down here. So let me remove that, define stroke width to be 10 here, and then define the stroke width attribute to be the value of the stroke width variable. OK, uh, so height over 2 is center x. So we can simplify this to be center x. And then I can just take this expression here and set that to be the value for r. Now things sort of magically cascade. So I could change the value of stroke width to, say, 30. And notice how the circle still goes right exactly up to the edge. That's because all of this is defined mathematically, programmatically. So far, so good. Now let's make our eyes. I think I'll change that back to 20. Going back to our index.html, I'm going to take just one of our eyes 
this one here, I think it's the left eye, I'm going to paste that right here next to that first of our circles. And there's our left eye. All right, so what is this 350? That's the x coordinate of our eye. And that's what this thought was. So we should be able to say CX equals center X minus I offset X. But we don't have I offset X defined, so I'm going to go ahead and make a new variable, I offset X, and set it to, say, 50. So now I'm going to take this idea and make it a reality. The CX of our left eye should be center x minus i offset x. All right, see that? Uh, maybe we need a little more of an offset. Let's say 90. All right, now it's moving around. But we don't need these comments anymore. And actually, I'm noticing we could simplify this to just make it a uh, self-closing circle tag. There we go. So now let's deal with CY. This should be quite similar. I mean, it, I guess it should just be um, center Y minus I offset Y. And we don't have that variable quite yet. So let me just make a new variable, I offset Y. And there we have it. So let me just test. If we increase this to, say, 110, our eye moves up a little bit. Let's keep it at, say, 100. All right, the last remaining thing is the radius of this eye. And I just want to make it so that we could control the radius of both eyes by setting one variable value. So I'm just going to make this defined by a variable as well. I'll call it eye radius. And we can define eye radius to be, what was it, 20? 50. Okay, now we should be able to pretty elegantly create the other eye. So I'm going to copy paste that. And the only difference should be instead of subtracting I offset X from center X, we should be adding it. So I'll just change that minus to a plus and boom, we've got two eyes. And now if we want to make both eyes smaller, we could just change I radius and be done with it. That's all for Let's Make a Face Part 2. Stick around for the next episode where we're going to add the mouth of our face finally using D3.